Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to continue the assembly for my 30 pound robot crippling depression. In the previous video I built the weapon block. This is now all together and I'm going to next move on to building the drive blocks and then the frame. So let's get the drive blocks put together. To put the dry blocks together, I actually kind of screwed up a little bit with these cutouts. They're supposed to fit the motors through, but they don't really work the way I want them to. So you actually kind of have to build this frame first and then build the dry blocks around it. So the first thing I need to do is attach these two inner frame rails to the weapon block. Unfortunately, the audio on my wireless microphone died very shortly after this. I don't have any of the original audio for any of this assembly. And because the assembly was obviously done, you know, before the competition and everything, I can't really go back in time and reassemble this. So I'm going to try my best to kind of, um, you know, narrate what was happening at the time. These inner frame rails are held to the weapon block with three, I think, 1032 screws. So there's three screws on each side, and that's kind of what holds the main um, inner chassis together. I'm actually building this on a granite block or a granite surface plate for maximum flatness. And one of the reasons I'm doing this is when I was kind of prototyping this design a little bit, I found that if these um, two inner frames weren't perfectly flat together, then the weapon wouldn't be perfectly flat to the frame and it would rub and um, hit against things. So Crippling Depression is kind of a tricky build because the whole thing is built to very, very small tolerances, at least for combat robots, and the actual weapon only has, I want to say, maybe like 50 thou clearance between it and the frame. So if these two frame pieces aren't perfectly parallel to each other, the weapon won't be parallel and then it's going to basically end up hitting into the frame. Now that the inner frame is assembled, it's time to start assembling the drive blocks around the inner frame. The dry blocks themselves don't really attach to the frame. They kind of attach through it, more on that later, but basically you have to kind of assemble them outside of the frame and they just kind of flop around. But once you assemble the actual UHMW pieces, they kind of act as these um, solid units. There's a separate drive block for both the left side and the right side, and they basically consist of two UHMW blocks and then a gearbox and a motor and then all the drive components on the inside. The UHMW components I made on my Tormach mill and the gearboxes are Bainbot P60 gearboxes and then I'm using an NTM, I want to say like 4238 brushless motor. Because of the way this is designed, you actually need to assemble the gearbox kind of outside of the dry block. Ideally, I wanted this to have it so that you assemble the whole dry block and it would just kind of drop down into the frame, but those cutouts that I mentioned earlier were just kind of in the wrong spot. So you actually need to drop in the gearbox into the dry block and it kind of sandwiches through that inner frame. Here is a much better camera angle that shows um, the components to the dry blocks. Uh, you can see that the main blocks are made out of the UHMW plastic, the black stuff, and you can see that they have bearings press fit into them for the better rotation of the shaft and the gearbox as well. So on the um, piece that you kind of see at the bottom, eh, left-ish middle of the screen, with the two bearings in it, that is basically just a cap that goes on top of the um, inside portion of the drive block. And that bearing will then support the shaft coming out of the gearbox, and then there's another drive shaft that's coming out for the other side. And what I'm doing right here is I'm actually measuring with calipers all the spacers that I need. There are um, stainless steel spacers that go in between pretty much every component on the drive block, so there's absolutely no wiggle room and there's actually no movement between everything. You can see the um, sprockets there on the table. I'm using chain drive, I think number 25 chain, to drive from the gearbox to the front axle. So you can see I just kind of put in the wheel, installing the um, snap ring, and then I will install the appropriate spacers so that not only are the chains, you know, perfectly, um, I guess, parallel with the frame, but nothing rubs against each other. 
what you kind of can see now that I'm putting everything together is there's almost no extra room in this dry block. The chain has a little channel there at the top. It can only travel through that channel. So there's really no room for anything to move anywhere else other than where it's supposed to go. And from here, it's just a matter of installing all the correct spacers in all the right places. And it took me a while to kind of figure this out. But once you get the spacers in place, it's time to attach the sprockets. And a little another note that you can't really tell at this time, but everything is keyed. Um, the sprockets are keyed, the shafts are keyed, and so really you're not seeing any set screws or anything like that. This whole thing is just um, basically a shaft with a keyway and then a key that goes in it. And then when I finally put on the top of the block, once I figure out all the correct sizes for the spacers, there's really just no place for anything to go. So here is the top cap and it is oriented a certain way and it just kind of gets um, snapped on top. And then there's a screw that goes down the center of this dry block that holds the dry block together. And right here I'm pointing out those four holes that you see those are actually made to press out the bearings. So you can actually just put a little eighth inch um, pin through those uh, holes and then actually press out the bearings since they're actually press fit. And then um, this little screw in the middle, once again, holds the two halves of the dry block together. So, you know, just to keep it from flopping around when I'm working on it. But the four screw holes that you see kind of in the corner, that is what attaches it into the whole frame. So now that the one side is complete, you basically just flip the whole assembly over and then do the same thing on the other side. And I'm not gonna just you know narrate the same things over and over, so I'll just kinda let you watch what um, happens on the other side so you can kinda get a better idea of how it all goes together. Okay, at this point I've got both of the drive blocks assembled and they're, you know, roughly assembled on the outside of the inner frame and the inner frame is attached to the weapon block. So we're almost done here. I'm just going to go ahead and clumsily zoom into it. There we go. So that's a slightly better shot, I guess. And I have no idea what I'm explaining here. I'm rotating it around, showing you something about the weapon block in front. I don't know. But as you can see, the um, dry blocks just kind of loosely sit on the outside. And when I assemble the frame, everything will get fully assembled together. So hopefully this gives you a little bit better idea of how the uh, dry block gets assembled. And the next step is to move on to assembling the frame, which holds everything together. So, yep, go ahead and check out that video next.